Today we're adding rational numbers. And when you are adding rational numbers, you're going to use the same addition rules that you used when you were adding integers. So let's review those rules real quick. So the first rule that we learned when adding integers is if the numbers you're adding have the same sign, you're just going to add their absolute values and then use that common sign with your answer. So an example of that would be if you were adding negative 4 and negative 2 the absolute value of these two numbers, 4 and 2, is 6. And since they were negative, I'm going to use that common sign with my answer. My answer will be negative 6. The second rule that we talked about when adding integers was that if the numbers you're adding have different signs, then you're actually going to subtract their absolute values. And your answer is going to have the same sign as whichever number had a greater absolute value. So if the greater absolute value number was positive, your answer is positive. If the greater absolute value number was negative, your answer is negative. So an example of that would be negative 9 plus 7. So since one of these is negative and one is positive, I subtract their absolute values. 9 minus 7 is 2. And 9 has the greater absolute value, and 9 is negative, so my answer will be negative 2. And the last addition rule that we learned was that if you're adding opposites, the answer is always 0. So an example of that would be if I was adding negative 4 and positive 4, it's going to give me an answer of 0. So now we're just going to apply these same rules to adding rational numbers. So here's an example. I've got a rational number problem here. I'm being asked to find negative 8 thirds plus 5 sixths. Well, a lot of times when we have a negative fraction, we see the negative right out here in front. It's not really with the numerator or the denominator. It's just kind of floating out front. I always add that negative sign to my numerator. And I suggest you do the same. It makes it easier when we have to find common denominators if we don't have to worry about a negative denominator. So the first thing I did was I rewrote this problem, making sure that my negative was up here with my 8. So it became negative 8 over 3 plus 5 6. Then I needed to find a common denominator. So I decided that for 3 and 6, 6 would work as a common denominator. This second fraction stayed exactly the same. This one I doubled the denominator, so I doubled the numerator to negative 16. And now I'm going to add them. So whenever we add fractions, our denominator does not change, so it stays the same. And I'm adding up here negative 16 plus 5, which gives me negative 11. Before I'm done with this answer, I'm just going to change it into a mixed number. 6 goes into 11 once with 5 leftovers. Don't forget to carry that negative. So my answer here is negative 1 and 5 sixths. Let's try another one. This time I'm starting with one fraction here that is in mixed number form. I'm going to change this guy to an improper. So this is going to become negative 20 thirds. And I'm putting that negative right up here with my numerator. Plus, once again, I'm going to put this negative with the numerator, negative 3 fifths. So the next thing I need is a common denominator. So 3 and 5 have a common number of 15. So 3 times 5 gives me 15. Negative 20 times 5 will give me negative 100. For this second fraction, 5 times 3 gives me 15, so I'm going to do negative 3 times 3, and I get negative 9. Negative 100 and negative 9 is negative 109, and my denominator stays the same, 15. So I'm going to change this guy into a mixed number. So I'm carrying down my negative. 15 goes into 109 seven times. That gets us up to 105. So I have four leftovers. I always check and make sure that I can't reduce my final answer, and I can't here, so negative 7 and 4 fifteenths. Okay, rational numbers are not always fractions. 
Sometimes rational numbers come in the form of decimals. So here we have another rational number problem where we see some decimals. So they're asking us to find negative 8 and 15 hundredths plus negative 4 and 3 tenths. So whenever I add decimals, I want to line my decimals up just like you would line up the buttons going down your shirt. So I line them up here. And because I had an empty slot here, I put a zero in there. It's my placeholder so I can add. So then I just added going down, 5 plus 0 is 5, 1 plus 3 is 4, bring down the decimal, 8 plus 4 is 12. Because both of these guys that I was adding had a negative sign, my answer is going to be negative 12 and 45 hundredths. So let's try another one. This time, they've got different signs. We're doing negative 4 and 5 hundredths plus 7 and 6 tenths. So this time, I'm going to subtract them. When I subtract them, I want to put the larger number on top, so 7 and 6 tenths on the top. I'm going to subtract 4 and 5 hundredths. So once again, I have an empty slot here, and this empty slot, I'm going to have to fill in a 0. All right, so let's start our subtracting. 0 minus 5, uh-oh, I have to borrow. This will become 10 minus 5, which is 5. 5 minus 0 is 5. Next comes my decimal, 7 minus 4 is 3. Now I'm going to go back to my original problem, and I see the number here with the greater absolute value is the 7 and 6 tenths. 7 and 6 tenths is positive, so my answer will be positive 3 and 55 hundredths. Alright, so let's try um, a few of these expression problems. They're asking us to evaluate the expression when a equals one-half and b equals negative three-fourths. Okay, so we've done one here already. This was b plus 4a. So when I see these written next to each other with no operation symbol between them, I'm multiplying them. And because I have to follow order of operations, the multiplication is going to go first. So I rewrote my expression here with b as negative 3 fourths and a as 1 half. So I'm going to multiply first. So that 4, I'm going to turn into 4 over 1 times a half, and I get 4 halves. So the multiplication is done. Now I'm going to add this to negative 3 fourths. Well, I need a common denominator. I'm going to double this denominator, so it also has a denominator of 4, and I'll have to double my numerator. So now I have negative 3 fourths plus 8 fourths. Negative 3 plus 8 is 5. The denominator carries over. If I change this to a mixed number, I have 1 and 1 fourth. Let's try one more. This one has an absolute value symbol around it, but I have to do the problem inside. So the problem inside is going to be 1 half plus negative 3 fourths. Instead of my variables, I'm substituting in their values. I need a common denominator here. So I'm going to go with 4 again. 1 half is 2 fourths plus negative 3 fourths. So now I'm going to add my numerators. 2 plus negative 3 gives me negative 1. The denominator just carries over. And then the absolute value of negative 1 fourth is positive 1 fourth. 